This is the IBM personal computer. It was the most advanced computing machine ever created. However, this isn't a story about a computer, but a story about when a computer stops working, and the man who created a way to start it all over. The man who invented Control-Alt-Delete. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Bradley, but you can call me Dr. Dave. Back in 1980, I worked on the IBM personal computer. My particular job on the IBM PC was writing the basic input-output system. Even with an elite team of engineers and designers, not everything goes smoothly when you're building a computer. We had programs that ran most of the time, but when they failed, the only way to reset the system was turn the power off, wait a while, turn the power back on, and it would go through a very long self-test. But the system might die every five to 10 minutes. What he needed was a way to shortcut the restart process. One of the things we discussed was putting a reset button on it. But if you put it on the system board, there's a chance that you could hit it by mistake and all your data gets lost. So what we did was came up with a three key sequence that would reset the computer and you couldn't hit by mistake. A single control key, a single alt key, and then all the way over at the right hand side, a single delete key. When you hit that control alt delete, you're deleting everything that you're working on right now and starting new. I was also able to skip over many of the tests. So instead of taking a minute or two, it was 10 or 15 seconds. But it wasn't a big deal at the time. It was like number 17 on the list of 100 different things I had to fix. Even though it was built only as a development tool, programmers began incorporating the feature into their applications. From there, it was released into the wild, but didn't immediately reach pop culture status. For years, it was no big deal. And then at the 20th anniversary of the IBM PC, that's when Control-Alt-Delete became sort of a cultural icon. It was the simplest and easiest way to fix your problem. Hit Control-Alt-Delete, start all over. Despite all this, Dr. Dave doesn't think much of this contribution to computing history. I did lots of things with IBM, but all everybody remembers is Control-Alt-Delete. But I'll take that. The fame of Control-Alt-Delete means that I worked on a very successful product, and I'm very proud of having been able to do that. These paintings, they aren't done with acrylic, oil, or watercolor. Excel Microsoft Excel, the computer program. This is a story about Tatsuo, the Microsoft Excel artist. When Tatsuo retired, he decided he wanted to paint, but there was one problem. He was cheap. He didn't even want to pay for an art program, so he used what was already on his computer. So how do you paint in Excel? The line tool, it's usually used for spreadsheet graphs. That you can make trees with. And the bucket tool, it helps with subtle shading on, for example, the crest of a volcano. まあ、
ねバカなんだよ。ご苦労なんかなくたって、えー、っとエクセルさえあれはかけるえというのはねなかなか売れないんじゃないの一瞬分かりませんけどね私のようねこれ買ってくれる人が言うとね実にありがたいんですけど。It transcends age, culture, and language. It's a gamer and non gamer's game. But did you know Tetris has a Soviet past? Tetris is the brainchild of this man, Alexei p o z h i d n o v Alexei was a computer programmer in Russia. He worked for the Soviet Union at the Moscow Academy of Sciences. Alexei always had a propensity for math, computers, and puzzles. It was that propensity that led him to the creation of the best video game of all time. He drew inspiration from a little known game, Pentominos. Pentominos was a puzzle board game in which you had to fit geometric shapes together. Alexei took the principles from Pentominos, upgraded them, and created a computer game, originally only intended for himself. He named the game Tetris for two reasons. It's a combination of tetra, the Greek word meaning four, and tennis, p a z h i n o v s favorite sport. Because Tetris was created during work hours, the Soviet Union claimed all rights to both Tetris and all royalties. Oi! Fast forward to 1996, the rights to Tetris were finally signed over to p a z h i n o v Tetris taps into our universal need to create order out of chaos, which is ultimately why it's one of the most iconic games in history. You've got you. You've got mail. You've got you. You've got mail. Goodbye. To all of you who thought AOL was voiced by a computer, now let's set the record straight. I recorded those phrases. Welcome. You've got mail. Files done. Goodbye. My name is Elwood Edwards, and I'm the voice of You've Got Mail. In 1989, my wife was a customer service rep. For the company that was about to become America Online, she heard Steve Case talking to some of the programmers about how fun it would be to add a voice to the software. I've been an announcer throughout my entire broadcasting career, and she volunteered me. I scribbled those phrases on a piece of paper, and like I say, on the cassette deck, I recorded the welcome, you've got mail, files done, goodbye. It started off as a test. Just to see if it would catch on. And lo and behold, in the mid 90s, it had really caught on. And at one point, they said my voice was heard more than 35 million times a day. But the problem was, I was typecast. The one thing I did do was a voice for The Simpsons. You've got leprosy. Leprosy! Goodbye. Being associated with AOL has been gratifying. Even today, you go on. AOL.com. I greet you. I greet myself. <laughs> When I look at a floppy disk today, I look at something that's valuable and that I use. And yet, when most people look at it, they'll look at it almost as a joke. Floppydisk.com. I'm the last man standing in the floppy disk business because I basically forgot to get out of the business. In this office, we're in a time warp. The manufacturing of the diskettes is over. And so all of the diskettes that will be made have been made. I'm desperately trying to acquire as many diskettes as I possibly can. All kinds of disks come flying into our doors. From time to time, a commercial recycler will call me up and say, Hey, I have somewhere between 35,000 and 50,000 disks. We sort them. We run them through a process to erase the information. Once the diskettes are reformatted and relabeled, we're able to resell them. We do sell to the US government. There are a number of applications that the government has that call for the use of a floppy disk. The old saw is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
Most of our business is for commercial and industrial use, whether they be embroidery machines, ATMs, avionics for airplanes. Those machines are still around and they're going to last for quite a few more years. The floppy disk business will not be around forever. Are you sad about that? No, I won't be around forever either. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha